Welcome to BT Green Talks. I'm your host, Mirna. I have always been passionate about nature and being outside, but my interest and curiosity for sustainability have extremely grown, especially during my master's in global food, nutrition and health at the University of Bayreuth. Knowing that in this world we have limited resources resulted in me being more aware of my actions. For example, when it comes to energy consumption, investing in materials and food choices. That is also why we are here today. There is still a lot more to learn and I'd like to take you with me on this journey. Together, we will explore the intersection of environment, climate change and human health. We will also look into planetary health and sustainability. Every episode will focus on a different topic, where we will talk with experts from the field and look at possible actions we can take, not only as individuals, but also as a society and on a policy level. This episode will start with an overview of the current environmental challenges. But before we get started on that, I went out to the campus and asked the students here at the University of Bayreuth what they know about climate change and planetary health. Planetary health? Yes. Mm. Planetary health? Uh, you mean the health of the planet? <laughs> well, everything we do we get from the planet, right? So. If the planet is not healthy, that, uh, that affects a lot of our daily things. Uh, for me, planetary health means uh, the health of our planet and its people. So a way that we keep ourselves healthy, but also our planet, the species that lives in it, and the non-living parts of the earth, like soil or air and water. I think that climate change is one of the most important questions right now and um, especially we as humans have a big impact on it. I also think that it's getting worse and that maybe right now not enough is being done. I think that climate change is a problem worldwide. So it has been producing a lot of uh, changes in the weather. For example, we can see that now the weather is uh, really different from what it, from what it was. Uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. but I think everyone knows like the basic information shared in like the news about how the nature and animal life is changing with like the climate change and how it like forces animals to leave their natural habitat because the for example water temperature is rising and then the quarries are dying because of the stress they have because of the rising temperature of the water. Mm -hmm. To have a better understanding of the environmental challenges, I spoke with Professor Nagel, the moderator of the master's program Environment, Climate Change and Health at the University of Bayreuth. Professor Nagel has a doctorate in medicine and philosophy, and since 2001 he has been the managing director of the Institute for Medical Management and Health Sciences. I've asked him to provide us with an overview of the various human activities that are negatively impacting the environment. Well, I think what is pretty clear is that uh, human activities since the period of industrialization have majorly changed uh, our way how we use this planet, use in terms of uh, what we take out of it, what kind of resources we uh, activate and what this makes a major change. Um, we are now in a period where we have uh, used uh, extremely intensively energy out of fossil environmental situations and uh, the consequences what we see today is that this is majorly changing our climate, that this is majorly changing the surface um, of um, uh, our planet and therefore we can see in many different areas uh, what are the challenges uh, for us as humans, for the nature in itself, for um, the whole environment. And um, we have to acknowledge that this may be a development which has a intensive danger. Uh, absolutely. Um, the scope and scale of these impacts are frightening. Um, could you elaborate on some of the scientific aspects that are underlying these environmental problems and challenges? Well, absolutely. At the heart of many environmental challenges lies the issue of climate change, mm -hmm. driven primarily by the emission of greenhouse gases that come from burning fossil fuels, as I've mentioned it uh, just before. Mm -hmm. Deforestation is one of the major uh, aspects we can uh, see. 
and the whole setup of industrial processes. This has resulted in rising global temperatures, one of the major issues we are discussing. Melting ice caps is very frightening to mm -hmm. see what this is uh, uh, all about and the rise of the sea level will have consequences uh, not only for uh, some uh, isolated islands uh, in the Pacific but will have consequences to all of us up to the shore uh, of uh, the Europe continent. Additional human activities such as uh, overfishing, pollution from agricultural surplus and industrial waste and habitat destruction threaten biodiversity and the integrity of the ecosystem in itself. Let's move into what we will be discussing in our upcoming episodes, because we will be talking a lot about planetary health and planetary boundaries. Could you explain these two concepts to us? Well, if we talk about planetary health, it's a concept that emphasizes the interconnectedness between human health, which means that humans are integrated in their situation where they live in. So the health of humans is at the same time the health of the planet natural system, and therefore we call it planetary health. It recognizes that human well-being is closely linked to the state of the environment and uh, the functioning of the ecosystems. Planetary health considers the impact uh, of environmental changes. In terms of climate change, we have discussed about heat as a threatening uh, example of how human health can be endangered. Biodiversity loss has consequences for us. We talk about the situation that there are many skin or other diseases which uh, uh, result uh, through allergies, uh, which are connected again to biodiversity situations. Um, and pollution, certainly, if we talk about polluted air, we have a rising situation of uh, lung cancer all over the world. And this is connected, as we do know already, uh, through pollution of the air. And there we can closely see the consequences of uh, challenges in the natural context and consequences of human health. So in, um, we could continue to water, we could continue to food, and uh, all this has uh, implications to human health. And therefore, we see that planetary health um, has a very broad uh, connection between the different living situations towards the aspect of human and natural health. Any more clarification to the concept of planetary boundaries and what practically this term refer to? Well, planetary boundaries, as you mentioned, it's a set, uh, a set of nine critical environmental thresholds. If they are crossed, they could lead to irreversible and abrupt environmental changes, jeopardizing the stability of the Earth system in itself. And if we talk about today situations where we have so-called tipping points, we are afraid that there might be a situation, coming back to melting of ice in the Antarctic, uh, at a specific point, if the temperature is so high that uh, the Antarctic ice is melting uh, uh, at all, then we certainly have a situation where this is not reversible. And what we're talking about today in terms of uh, planetary boundaries is at what point do we have a situation where situations are not reversible anymore. By now, the word sustainability has been mentioned a few times. But what is in fact sustainability? Let's also have a look at how the students define sustainability for themselves. Sustainability, what I think about, is more of something that can be, that can be done every year, something that can be sustained over years, something that doesn't end. Like, for example, when you have oil and petrol in a car, it's not sustainable because it's going to end, right? Sustainable is something that's going to be there over and over and over. I guess it's mostly the um, um, that you have this uh, this energy source that doesn't produce much more carbon emissions while still producing energy. The sustainability is that we um, use our resources um, effectively, so we, that we don't produce as much waste maybe that we do. To me, in a sentence, it means taking care of our environment, basically. It, it means that for, would we be able to keep on doing the things that we are doing today, you know, in say 10 years, 100 years, in a thousand years to come, you know, 
It's a question we should ask ourselves. If we can drive a car today healthy, can we do the same thing in 100 years? Maybe, you know, our children's children will not find that the same conducive environment. So being sustainable means that being able to still enjoy our lives and, you know, doing it in a way that lasts for a longer time. Actually, our students' perception is not too different from what the United Nations Commission defines sustainability. They define it as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. To address the global challenges we are facing and ensure a more sustainable future for all, the UN Agenda aims to achieve 17 Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Additionally, to have a better grasp of how sustainable and climate-friendly the students at the University of Bayreuth consider themselves, I ask them what they are already doing to help mitigate climate change in addition to what they consider should be done. A lot. <laughs> a lot. By being conscious, consciously making efforts, you know, to ensure that we do not really um, pollute our environment. Where I come from in Ghana, uh, people actually use polythene bags and they leave it and it chokes gutters and it causes flooding. You know, we have drainage issues. And in the end, uh, we've seen people that there have been, you know, casualties, people have died. And I think that we need to take personal responsibility because we all are at risk. And also reducing consumption, for example, mainly in Europe and USA. So we are using a lot of things and we don't really need them. So we just should reduce them. So we don't need the energy to build these things. I took the train or the bus wherever I can because I have a car, but I do not really use it often. For me, it's clothing personally. So I try to wear the clothes even longer. So don't go after seasons, don't go after like fast fashion, stuff like that. It's not only like recycle, but also be conscious about what we do. Mm, I think we as individuals cannot do so much. Like it's nice if you go vegan or uh, try to not take the plane or something. But I think that uh, especially politics, like they have to do more. Uh, join a movement or an action or change a habit. Or you can do even some other stuff like trying to change laws or talking to governments and administrations, as well as in education with children or adults even that might need help learning about that stuff. These were very inspiring thoughts from our students. Let's continue with what Professor Nagel advised us in terms of potential solutions and actions to address these environmental challenges. Well, first of all, I'm very positive and I'm convinced that uh, humans who have now brought us into a difficult situation that we are uh, have the capacity to challenge that. But to address these complex changes, mm -hmm. we must adopt the multi-faceted approach to incorporate both mitigation and adaptation strategies. Mm -hmm. Mitigation efforts involve reducing greenhouse gas emissions through the transition to renewable energy, Improving energy efficiency is a very important uh, aspect and implementing sustainable land uses practices such as reforestation as sustainable agriculture. Adaptation measures focus on building resilience to the impacts of climate change, protecting vulnerable ecosystems and promoting ecosystem-based approaches to disaster risks reduction. Those are steps we can take. Great, great to know that the, there's still hope uh, and a possibility to act and make a change. Um, are there any other possibility to approach these challenges than from an individual level? Well, I think absolutely. Uh, in addressing these environmental challenges, we can act and on different levels. And there we differentiate between a micro level, mm -hmm. which means us as individuals, we can do something a so-called meso level, for instances on the community level, mm -hmm. and finally on a macro level, such as policy making. If we all work together, I think it's obvious that we then maybe have a chance to challenge. It's essentially to engage stakeholders from diverse backgrounds 
and disciplines, including policymakers, scientists, as we are here at the university, businesses and civil society, to develop and implement effect solutions for a global scale. Thank you very much for your valuable insights. Are there any take-home messages that you would like to share with us today? Well, achieving a global and or planetary health um, necessitates global cooperation. I think that's a very important aspect. And therefore, my major uh, engagement would be to really work together, to communicate with each other, and to try by giving us uh, understanding that we are not alone, that we are really a community. Great message. And once again, Professor Naga, thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us today. As a last question, I find it very interesting to know how the students at the University of Bayreuth imagine a greener future. I guess a green future would be to, to say, to, to live in harmony with, with the nature and the surroundings and not to be such an impact on the other nature, animals and other people and well, places. Of all I think about green energy, like uh, with wind, with solar mm -hmm. systems, with water. Going green for me is also producing as little waste as possible. Also increasing like planting trees for mm -hmm. the CO2. Uh, we should uh, uh, live very simpler. In my imagination it's a really nice place because we all take also more care of our health. So green in the future, maybe also giving the nature a little bit more space, because that's a big problem, I think. We are, as humans, we're living all over the world, and the, the nature uh, can't defend herself in the end. Here we come to the end of our first episode, where we presented the current environmental challenges and suggested potential solutions. As we look ahead, we will dig deeper into the climate change related problems and explore in more details the possible solutions. Stay tuned as we uncover the impact of human activities, industries and greenhouse gas emission on the environment, ecosystem and also on human health and healthcare systems. In our upcoming episodes, we will explore strategies for urban planning and reducing energy consumption. We will discuss the importance of waste management and recycling, and also highlight solutions at all levels. Join us as we continue to explore these vital topics and work together towards a more sustainable future for all. Finally, please remember to stay informed about environmental issues, stay engaged to contribute to positive change, and most importantly, Stay green. Until next time.